Praise the Lord. Thank you for letting me know that. I appreciate that. How there? Is that better? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise Bless the you. Lord. Thank you for letting me know that. I appreciate that. How's that? Is that better? Okay. I think I can hear myself now. Turn that off. All right. Thank you, Jesus. I got different sources going at the same time to trying to get all the technical stuff in order I tell you God is good blessed be the name of the Lord he is worthy to be praised thank you Jesus this is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it this has been a, a wonderful day a relaxing day a glorious day because the Lord made it and we're still here. When we know that God is on our side, it doesn't matter what's going on around in the world today. God is still working in our behalf. I, I have an expectancy that greater things are coming. Better days are coming. Glorious days are coming because God has created everything for his glory. And when he created everything for his glory, he gave us the power that we can come boldly before the throne of grace, obtain mercy and help in the time of need. So whatever you have a need for tonight, God promises that he will supply your every need. When you do as the word says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. When we seek his righteousness, everything that entails your life, God will unfold through the mysteries of the gospel. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. And God promises the word cuts when it goes and it cuts coming back. In other words, there are some things in our lives that God has to cut out to get our attention. He has to cut people out of your lives that don't mean you no good. God will begin to purge things out of you that will prevent you from entering to his presence, giving him the glory. So tonight I want to start out with a devotional from the book, More of You, God. You can find this book on Amazon and, and uh, in the Kindle version or the hard copy. You can also get this book uh, at Barnes & Noble. And it's written by uh, my, uh, co my, my, my host on the radio show I attend every week, Joy 1340 AM with Pastor Walter Owens. And I tell you that this book is very powerful devotion because it gives you an inspiration to start your day. And when you read these devotionals, it, it should ignite fire in your heart. And when you are expecting God to do something for you, it gives you that hope and a reassurance that God is moving in your behalf. So tonight, today is the 19th. I want to start our reading in the book. More of you, God. It says, Lord. You say in your word, in the name of Jesus, you have equipped me to cast out demons, to lay hands on the sick. I have, I have family and friends who are suffering with all types of diseases and are in great pain. I have encountered health problems myself, but I have anointed hands. Today, Lord, I tap into the power in which you have put inside of me. Holy Spirit, now I go forth with the authority you have given me. I tap into faith in you, Lord. I stand on your word today with your power inside of me. In the name of Jesus, I lay hands on the sick. In the mighty name of Jesus, I even, even touch myself and speak healing over me. All who come near me with sickness or in pain are healed. Father, I know your word does not lie. I'm standing on the truth and your promises. And when I get into your presence, all things change and become new. I am reborn and restored 
by more of you, God. That is so powerful. That is so powerful to remind us of how much power we have within ourselves to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. To lay hands on ourselves and we can be healed. And when people touch you because the anointing is on you, they will receive healing and deliverance because of the connection of the relationship that you have with God, that when you tap into the, the frequency of the Holy Spirit, when you get connected to the power source that comes from God, God radiates his glory to manifest the anointing in your life to bring healing and deliverance to whoever you come in contact with. That's why he said you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He didn't say the possibility, he didn't say maybe, but he said they shall recover. And that word stands for you, my brother, my sister, that no matter what's going on in your life, you can receive the same power on the inside because God is working on the inside, manifesting outside of your life to show others that you are connected to him and he belongs to you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining me, everyone. I, I just give God the glory for you, your support tonight. And I pray that something be said tonight that would encourage you, that would stir you up in your faith, that would charge you up in your walk with the Lord and help you get to the place where you're standing firm, regardless of what coming against you, regardless of the adversities and the trials and the tests, that you keep on holding fast to the word of God. Because the word of God produces life and life more abundantly on the inside of us. You know one thing about God? He loves us so much, even in our fallen state when we make mistakes. You know, everybody in this world, even who saved and unsaved, they have a spirit of bondage in some type of way in their lives. Then because of those different things, the enemy has attached itself to us. We've been dealing with the spirit of bondage for the last couple of weeks. And, and I guarantee that when you walk in freedom, the spirit of bondage loses its grip off of you. So I want us to open up in prayer at this moment and declare God's word in the atmosphere that his word would have free access to reach the hearts of the hearers who hear this word and to set them free by the power of the Holy Spirit. And gracious God, our Father, we thank you for another opportunity to break the bread of life. We thank you for the word of God, the empowerment of your Holy Spirit working in us, O oh God, to will and do according to your good pleasure. Father, I pray tonight that the word of God will go forth with power and authority, break through the darkness, break through, Father God, the, the bondage and the chains and the shackles and the strongholds of the enemy, O oh God, that is inflicted upon your people, God, and set them free. And we decree and declare, Father God, the word will have free access to meet them right where they are no matter what it is they're in bondage to, no matter how long they've been in that thing, but that the word of God, Father God, will cut coming and going to set them free, O oh God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Lord God, for the anointing to rest upon this word, upon our hearts, upon our minds, to receive this word with meekness that's able to save our souls. And we thank you, Lord God, that we shall walk in victory. We shall walk in freedom. We shall walk in truth and righteousness because your word tells us that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And we thank you, Lord God, as you purge us, that you fill us, God. You purge us and you renew and refresh us and revive us, God, by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you, everyone. Thank you for joining. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I declare that, you know, when we begin to decree and declare God's word in the atmosphere, the devil gets mad about that because he don't want you to be free. We all have something, as I stated before, that we, we are in spiritual bondage to. God still loves you. That's the greatest thing to know that he's not judging you. He's not prejudging you. He's not condemning you. The Bible says that when Christ came into the world, he did not come to, to judge the world, but to convict the world, you know, of sin, that they will receive him as Lord and Savior and be born again. You can receive the new life in Christ if you desire if you want to be set free, God will set you free. But if you don't want to be free, the enemy still has a hold and a grip on your mind and on your heart. And he will hold you in a place of captivity, a spiritual bondage and shackles and chains. And no matter how much you struggle and tug of war to try to get out of that thing, you don't have the power to do it in your own strength. It don't work that way. 
We cannot set ourselves free from nothing the enemy holds in captivity to until we recognize how much I need the Lord and Savior in my life. And when we give ourselves over to the Lord, the power of the Holy Spirit will come into your life. He will begin to strip the enemy of his power. The Bible already tells us when Jesus rose from the dead, he stripped him of his power and gave us the authority. But the problem comes in, we relinquish our authority and give it right back to him. So the enemy takes your authority, he takes your power, and he uses it against you. Why? Because of the mindset. It goes back to the mindset. We've been dealing with this since last year, how the enemy attaches itself to our minds and holds us in, in a spiritual prison and bondage. Until we get to the place where we want to be set free from that stronghold, the enemy will not let you go until you say, God, I need your help. God, I want you to come into my heart. Take control of me. Cleanse me, God. Purge me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Saturate me anointing. God's word has the power to strip the enemy of his armor in your life. We are to do as Ephesians 6 and 10. He said, finally, my brother, and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Why? Because you got to put on the full armor of God. Every day when you wake up, when you get up, you have to put on your clothes. We put on our physical clothes every day. Then we got to put on our spiritual clothes. If you don't put on your spiritual clothes every day, you're going out of the house naked. You're going out into a place of vulnerability. You're giving yourself into a place of attack. Because the enemy knows that if you're not clothed with the armor of Jesus Christ, he knows he can have free access into your mindset. So when he gets into your mind, he takes control of your heart. And he gives you desires and iniquity, sinful uh, ways to do and to form in your life because he got a hold of your mind. So tonight we're going to continue in our, our, our lesson we started uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago on, on the spirit of bondage. But I want to talk about anorexia nervosa. Anorexia nervosa. I was looking in this this. Uh, one uh, commentary, it talks about uh, what uh, uh, the spirit of anorexia is. It says, many people struggle with eating disorder like anorexia nervosa, binge eating disorder, and bulimia nervosa. Eating disorders are another form of self-harm. God can help. Satan can tell people lies and say, this is what you need to look like and this is what you need to do to make it happen. So in other words, the enemy plays on your psyche. You have people who feel that they're ugly. They feel like they're overweight. They feel like they don't look good. No matter what they do, they don't feel good. Why? Because of the mindset the enemy plays on your psyche to make you feel vulnerable, to make you feel inadequate, make you feel useless, make you feel worthless. So he plays on your mindset and says, the more you eat, you got to get this out of you. So anorexia nervosa is a form of bondage that has, has only surfaced in the past. Anorexia have Low anorexia person has low self-esteem and are especially sensitive to many stressful changes of adolescent. So in other words, it starts as a child. If your parents tell you something to make you feel like you're no good and make you think you're no good, it stays in your mindset. So as you begin to progress in age and get older, your mind is still stuck in the past of believing that I'm never going to do anything to look better. I'm going to always look ugly. I'm going to always be overweight. I'm going to look fat. You can have the skinniest person who feels they're fat. They feel they're overweight. So they, they eat and then they take a laxative to purge themselves immediately after eating because they feel like I'm overweight. That's a mental illness. That's a, a stronghold from the enemy and a lie from the devil to tell you that you're no good is a form of self-harm to hurt yourself. Because the more you keep purging yourself with the laxatives, you're pulling out the nutrients and the things that your body needs to survive. And the enemy knows this, so he plays on your mind to the place where he got you in a spiritual, a spiritual prison and he don't want to let you go. Christians are to put on the full armor of God to block the devil's lie because he is a liar from the beginning. The Bible tells that he's a liar from the beginning. People struggle with body images because of what 
seen on television, social media, bullying, and more. Christians are to take care of our bodies and not to destroy them. You know why? Because the Bible tells us that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And God does not dwell in an unclean temple. So if we don't take care of our temple, then we allow the enemy to, to destroy our temple, to corrupt our temple. And so the enemy comes in and he, he begins to filtrate your temple with all kinds of junk to make you feel like God doesn't care about you. The scripture continually tells us that we must take our eyes off of ourselves. Once we start focusing on ourselves and our body image, we focus only truly what matters. We are to set our minds on the Lord. We are to set our minds. You catch what I just said. Set our minds on the Lord. Because the enemy knows that I can keep your mind off the Lord. I can lead you down a pathway of destruction, self-sabotage, iniquity. And the enemy knows that if I can get you back into the place of the things where you were, were delivered from, I can hold you back into that spiritual uh, uh, captivity. So as we continue to focus on God's word, and so we see how much truly he loves us and how he really sees us. God bought us with a high price. Nothing, nothing on this world can compare to the great price that was paid for you on the cross. God's love is poured out on the cross for you. Honor God with your bodies. Keep your mind on Christ. Spend time with God in prayer. Seek help from others. Never remain silent. If you keep, if you need help with gluttony, then it says continue to seek God's word and seek help. Psalms 139 verse 14 says, I will praise you because I have been remarkably and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know it very well. Isn't that amazing? How God spoke to David years ago, thousands of years ago, to write this in the Psalms 139 about how much we are, are wonderfully and fearfully made. Why? Because in the beginning, when God in Genesis chapter chapter uh, uh, chapter uh, three, when God created man and, and woman in the Garden of Eden, he, he he said, you know, he said they they were created in my image and my likeness. So. God created us in his image and likeness. He said it was good and very good. So anything God does was good. But the enemy comes along and corrupts what's good to make it, make it full of iniquity. And God wants you to know tonight that you don't have to be held in that type of a captivity of the mindset anymore. Because he who the Son has set free is free indeed. So we got to walk and want to be free. That's the key point is what do you want? How bad do you want it? Do you want to continue to be uh, uh, held in captivity, keep on being attacked, being manipulated by the enemy? It, is, it, is a, it says, here's in our book, it says, it is not necessary to go through all the manifestations of the spiritual bondage, but we do want to establish that it is extremely dangerous to get hung up on Satan's web. We talked about this last week about a spider's web, how a fly looks at a spider's web as one of those uh, hammocks that's hanging between two trees. And so the fly flies around this thing and he says, oh, that's a comfortable place I can go to. So the fly goes and he lands in this well, thinking it is a place of comfort. But all the time it's a place for his demise. So when he gets into this entrapment of the enemy, the spider lets him stay there till he struggles and struggles till he get more and more entwined in the well till he can't break free. And once you get to the place where you can't break free, that's when the enemy comes in and he sucks the life out of you. And that's what God wants you to know that it is dangerous place to get caught up in Satan's will. If you have tendencies towards this kind of behavior, please understand that God wants to deliver you and give you freedom and give you the desires of his heart. You got to want to be free. If you don't want to be free, you're going to continue to be held in captivity. Then another scripture. It says Proverbs 31, verse 30. Charm is decept it's deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. In other words, you can see yourself in a way that's, that it would cause you to be deceptive to your own self. You can think yourself better than what you really are and you're really nothing. You know, and that's when we have to get to the place where we know that, hey, 
I'm nothing without the Lord. If you think you can walk and live according to the way you want to live and that God is pleased with that, God says you become nothing. It says fleeting. It's failing. Beauty is fleeting. And so then he said, but a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. So as we continue to seek God and give him the glory that's due him, God says, I will cause you to look into the mirror of the word to see the beauty that's displayed from himself. When we were creating God's image and likeness, he said, when God said to the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, he said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the earth. When God did this, God says, they will be in our image and our likeness. So you were created with beauty. You were created with, with, with the presence of God to bring, bring forth his glory out of your life. But the enemy wants you to see yourself as a, play, as a person who's, who's no good, a person that's a failure, a person that never matter, matters or matters in life, never measures up to God's standard, a person who never mount to anything in life. The enemy knows that if I can get you to that place where I can deceive your mentality, I can control your entire life. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. It tells us, it said, brothers and sisters, in the view of all we have just uh, uh, shared about God's compassion, I encourage you to offer your bodies as a living sacrifices dedicated to God and pleasing to him. This kind of worship is appropriate for you. In the King James Version, it said, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So we got to get to the place where we recognize, okay, the life that I'm living it's not about me. It's about the Lord. So as I present, when you give an offering or a gift, you're presenting something to God. So when you present yourself to God, God says that I will receive the gift that you're giving me, which is yourself. That's when he said in verse 2, he said, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you got to get to the place where the transformation takes place in your thinking, in your mindset, in your attitude, in your character. Because all that comes from the origination of the mindset. Whatever man thinks, that's what he becomes. So if I think myself to be a failure, an uh, anorexia, a person that's never mount mounted to anything in life, guess what happens? I get the results of what I spoke out of my mouth to about myself. So the more I keep speaking negatively about myself, those things begin to manifest in my life and controls my, my life and my actions. So then you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. It says, don't you know that your body is the temple, of the, of the temple that belongs to the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, whom you receive from God, lives in you. You don't belong to yourselves. You are bought with a price. So bring glory to God in the way you use your body. That is so phenomenal. To know that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, which is from God. The Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you, so you don't belong to yourself. So you have to remember that God paid the price for me. So as I live, I need to live as a pleasing sacrifice to God. So everything I do to this body, God says, you're doing it to me. So if you abuse yourself, you're abusing God that lives inside of you. And God is not pleased with that, with that type of attitude, that type of mindset. So we got to get to the place where we recognize I need to be set free from the spirit of the enemy. Eating disorders can be very difficult topic to discuss. Sufferers and their families often experience great shame and the disorders are not easily treated. Sadly, eating disorders are not uncommon in the Western culture. Psychologists and other professionals now recognize Three distinct eating disorders as well as disordered eating, which does not fit into one of these three categories. Anorexia, which is nervo anorexia nervosa, is a disorder which a person will not maintain a normal weight, 85% or less of the weight that would be considered the normal weight for that person of the same age and height. It is fearful. It is fearful of weight gain. 
And it says this distorted images in his or her mind, also believing that he or she is fat and not admitting the seriousness of his or her low body weight. People with anorexia nervosa maintain their low weight body weight either through restricting food or at times through developing binging or purging behaviors. Bulimia nervosa is characterized by the reoccurrence uh, episodes of binge eating, eating more than it would be considered the normal in a particular amount of one time or doing so in a sense of lack of control. Then it says re recurrent purging through vomiting, laxative use, or other excessive exercise. Self-evaluation for people with bulimia nervosa depends on the body shape and weight more than, the, than for the other. Uh, though most people with bulimia nervosa are within normal weight range, perhaps a little below or above the normal weight, binge eating disorder has been newly classified and is essentially a disorder in which a person engages in binging eating and without compensatory or purging behavior. Compulsive eating, overeating, or food addiction is not specifically classified as an eating disorder, though it is certainly is a disorder eating and often includes obsessive thoughts about food. You hear what I said? It's obsessive thoughts about food. That means you just got to eat, eat, eat just because you think about eating. Some people consider gluttony and eating disorder, but the purposes of this article is that will not will not be addressed. So some people think that if I can just think about eating all the time, they're gonna just keep on eating. So you overeat, now you become an indulgent. You know, you indulge. And that's what God is saying. He don't want us to be indulgent. You know, overindulging in eating. We have to have a moderation in everything we do. Especially when it comes to your health. You gotta take your health seriously because the enemy knows if I can destroy your health I can destroy your life, then I can kill you. And that's what happens eventually. The enemy has a plan to kill, this, destroy you, to kill, still and destroy you. So then we want to talk about religious bondage. Religious bondages. We should also mention that many other religious cults, such as Unification Church of the Sun, Mayun Moon, better known as the Moonies, the Harry Krishners, the Church of Scientology, and the Jim Jones-like organizations, as well as the more respectable sects, such as Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons, fall under this strong man of religious bondage. Any practice, religion, or organization that uses fear to keep its members under control or that ties them to a set of, of rules contrary to the word of God is usually inspired by the spirit of bondage. It is as simple to recognize them because God offers us freedom, not bondage. So if you're in a religion and it controls you and it holds you in captivity to a rules and regulations and it's not lining with God's word, you need to get out of that thing because that's the enemy. The enemy does that because he wants to control you, control your life, and as I mentioned before, to kill you. So if he can get you to follow like Jim Jones when he had led all the different people to drink poison, they all died. That's what the enemy does. He wants you to follow something to where it kills you. The fear of death. The fear of death in a form of bondage, according to Hebrews 2.15. Hebrews 2.15 says, Who through fear of death were all their lifetime subjects to bondage? So when you have fear of death, you know, the enemy will use that as a tactic to get you to a place of bondage. People that fear death, they, they lost their hope. They don't have an expectancy of living. They just pretty much, you know, are, are afraid of, of what's going on and what's taking place in their life to where they don't even try to fight to live, but they're afraid of dying. I'm afraid to live and I'm afraid of dying. You know, so we have to decide what are we going to trust in? Who are we going to believe in? And we have to trust in God's word and believe God's word for ourselves because it's the word of God that produces life. In our book, it says, I remember a lady in her 80s who was near death and petrified through the thought of it. I explained to her how Jesus could deliver her and she accepted him as her savior. Then I rebuked the spirit of bondage and fear and loose the health and strength and the resurrection life to fill her. I prayed that when her time came to die, it would be peaceful and, and with such love that she would have no fear. Three days later, I learned that she was up about and had even been on some trips. 
out of the house with her family. You know, sometimes fear will paralyze you. Fear will hold you in a place where you, you can't do nothing. You won't go. You'll be afraid to leave out the house. You're afraid to drive your car down the street because you, you think somebody might hit you and kill you. You leave out a house, somebody might shoot you. You know, I mean, you can live in fear. You live in fear. You, you're not going to have, have your life amounted to nothing at all but captivity. We can put ourselves in captivity. Just like we talked about anorexia and bulimia and overeating, all these different things. It's a, it's a spirit of fear of, of what's taking place in your life. And the enemy uses many different tactics to hold you in captivity to fear. Then another scenario, it says a lady was suffering with a stomach cancer. She was just a tiny, frail, bedridden shadow. I prayed that the Lord would peacefully take her home, rebuke the spirit of bondage and fear, and ask the Lord to quicken her body. And several days later, she was out sweeping her walk. See how powerful prayer is? The key point to overcoming any type of a bondage in your life is prayer. Seeking the face of God. When you seek God's face, God will overpower the thoughts of the enemy and bring you to a place of freedom where you don't have to be held in captivity to the fear of dying. One thing for certain, if I was to die today, I know I would be with the Lord. I don't have, I don't have a guarantee because Jesus made that security for us when we give our lives to him that when we die, we're dying the Lord. And the Bible tells us, blessed are they who die in the Lord. So it's a blessing if you die in the Lord. If you die outside the Lord, then you know your destiny is going to hell. Then it says, at, it says about at that time, I went to the Lord to find out what was going on. Everyone I had prayed for have a peaceful death with getting up, restored to health. He let me know that he was just allowing them to enjoy a few more months or years of life free from bondage and fear, so they would have the taste of what his peace was like before they were going to heaven. That is so amazing. So the man of God was praying for different people in different conditions, and as he prayed for them who was at the point of death, God reversed the spirit of death off their life and produced life in them and gave them an opportunity to live a peaceful life and experience the goodness of God. God wants you to experience his goodness every day of your life, but you have to want to be free from the spirit of bondage. If you don't want to be free from the spirit of bondage, then you're going to have a miserable life. You're going to have a life that's never satisfying, a life that's never pleasing, a life that never gives you that expectancy of, 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 of greater days or better days coming because the mindset will be so warped and distorted to where every time the enemy speaks to you, you give in to those thoughts. The Bible tells the way to cast down every imagination, every high thought that is all itself against the knowledge of God. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, it says, So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. So we got to maintain our freedom. If Christ has set you free, it's up to you to maintain your freedom. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 is up to you to hold fast to the, the freedom from captivity. The children of Israel were led into captivity many times because of rebellion. You know where rebellion comes from? The mindset, the stubbornness, the idolatry. Anything that's contrary to God's word will lead you down a pathway of rebellion. Rebellion will lead you into a spiritual prison. Rebellion will lead you to a place of captivity. Rebellion will lead you to a place of defeat. And that's what the enemy does. He wants you to feel defeated every day of your life that you are never going to walk into God's plan, God's purpose, his, his will for your life. You're going to always walk into a place of darkness. I love Charlie Brown. I mentioned this before a while ago. Just like Pigpen on Charlie Brown. Everywhere he went, he had a dark cloud following him and it rained. That's what many believers have upon them, a spiritual darkness that continues to rain down gloom and doom over your life because you refuse to let go of your mindset and get the mind of Christ. We must let the mind of Christ be in us and not be of the mind of the world. 
The more you have the mind of the world, the more the worldly mentality controls your action. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Your belly will be satisfied by the fruit, whatever it is you, you produce from your mouth. So if you speak negatively about yourself, you're going to always get negative results. But if you begin to speak truth and positiveness about yourself, what God says about you, you will always find yourself receiving the, the, the blessings and the, and the promises that God has for you. Freedom from bondage. So you got to get in the word of God. I say it all the time. Get into the word of God and allow the word of God to get inside of you. Because once the word gets inside of you, it strips the enemy of his power. It strips him of his authority. And God will begin to operate in your life to give you a satisfying life. And anything you do, you'll find yourself walking in the plan that God has for you, having a fruitful life. Because Jeremiah 29, 11, God said, I know the thoughts and plans I have for you to prosper you and to do you no harm and give you a future and expected end. So if God promises your life is not in your hands, that I paid the price for you, then it's a guarantee that God knows the destiny for your life. He knows just what you need when you need it. He knows how to meet you right where you are, but you got to be willing to let go of yourself and tell God, God, I am short in this area. I messed up over here. I thought these evil thoughts many times that dominated my, my thought life. But now, God, I acknowledge that I have some thoughts that's not of you, God, about myself, because that's not what your word says about me. In Psalms 139 and 1, uh, uh, David was talking about, Lord, search me and know me, try my ancient thoughts. Know my ancient thoughts. Why? Because he knows that God has the ability to go beyond what your mouth is saying. Your mouth can say one thing, but your heart can be saying something else. And, and David says like this, Oh, Lord, you have examined my heart, and you know everything about me. You know when I sit down you, or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm afar away. Why? Because he know our, our thought life would drift far away from God. So he said, even, he said, you know my thoughts even when I'm afar away. God knows when your thought life then drifted from his, from his plan, drifted from the word. He knows when your mindset had then slipped back into temptation, trials, and tests, back into the bondage of sin, the things that held you in captivity. He knows when you went right back to that place where you said, okay, God, it was better than Egypt. Why you brought me out here into the wilderness to die? We had it better in Egypt. In Egypt, God, we were satisfied, we were taken care of, but now we're out here, we got to suffer. Sometimes God will let you do what you want to do. Until you fall on your face to come back to him in repentance. But then he goes on. He says in verse 7, Psalm 139, verse 7, he says, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up, verse 8, if I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride on the wings of the morning, and if I dwell in the farthest oceans, even there, your hand will guide me, and your strength will support me. God promises to never leave us nor forsake us. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He promises that we can never escape from his presence. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, they went and hid themselves behind some bushes and sold themselves some fig leaves. And God cried out to Adam, where are you? God already knew where Adam was. But he wanted Adam to see where he was. Adam had fallen into the place of sin and temptation and abandoned his position, his authority that God had given him to rule the earth. So because he gave up his authority, the enemy came in with a subtle plan and tactic to strip him of his power, and he gave it to him willfully. You have to take back your authority today. The spirit of bondage is a lie from the devil, and you have the power to take back your authority. You don't have to be held into captivity of the enemy anymore because God says no matter where you go, you can't escape his spirit. You cannot get away from God's presence. 
Because God is wherever you are, wherever you go, no matter what you're doing, good or bad, guess what? God is there. The Holy Spirit is there. Because the Holy Spirit, when you accept Christ in your life and you continue to sin, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. You're grieving the Holy Spirit. You're saddening the Holy Spirit. You're, you're forsaking God's word and you're telling God the blood of Christ wasn't good enough to keep me. So then, as we continue, it says, about that time when I when I went to the Lord to find out what was going on, he said, he prayed for everybody and they, they lived. But then it says, you see, Satan had power of death. Satan had the power of death, but he doesn't anymore where Christians are concerned. Satan had the power of death, but he lost the power of death when Jesus died and he ascended to a place of unrighteousness. It says unrighteous dead and took the keys of hell and death. In Revelation chapter 1, Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, he took the keys of hell and death. And Paul reassured the believers that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. There is nothing to be afraid of. So my brother and sister, when Jesus took the authority from the enemy, he stripped the power of the grave and of death. He said, oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where's your victory? Because Jesus took the power of death in the grave and he rose up with all the authority in his hand. He took the keys from the enemy and he gave us the authority. Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19, Behold, I have given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. You have the authority. So, that is what Jesus wants to do for you. It doesn't matter what your problem may be. Jesus is ready to set you free. He's ready to set you free. The only thing we must be willing to do is give up the life of sin. Acknowledge that we are sinners. Acknowledge that we are sinners. And allow the Holy Spirit to convict your heart of sin and ask God for pardoning. Just like when a person goes to prison and they're wrongfully imprisoned. The judge, when the, all evidence come back and found that this person served time wrongfully in jail, they have to be pardoned. That means set free immediately and even get restitution. I heard on the news just this morning of a man who was wrongfully imprisoned for about, I think it's about like 19 years in jail. And they found out the evidence from the DNA came back in this time and age that the man served a sentence that was not for him. He was innocent of the charges that were brought against him and they had to set him free and then guess what they gave him restitution of eighty thousand dollars in the state of texas that's what god does for you my brother my sister he will cause you to receive restitution from your spiritual prison when you were wrongfully imprisoned by the enemy when Jesus paid the price and set you free, God says, I will give you restitution, which is the promises that God has for your life. The Bible tells God to give us everything that pertains to life and godliness through Jesus Christ our Lord. So everything it tells your life is in Christ Jesus. And he said, guess what? I gave it to you. Financial breakthrough, I gave it to you. Deliverance, I gave it to you. Healing, I gave it to you. Victory, I gave it to you. Freedom. From all accusations and charges, I gave it to you. Whatever it is you need of, the restitution has been provided for you. That is excellent news to know that everything that it tells my life, God says he paid the price for it. Now it's mine. So I want you to know tonight that the spirit of bondage can be bound once and for all in your life, but you got to want it Admit it, accept it, that I'm in, I'm in prison, I'm in bondage, I'm a sinner, and allow the Lord to come into your heart and set you free. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Pray for your impossible person. Pray for your impossible person. Each one of us has someone who is in such bondage to sin that we have 
all been given up on him or her ever to be born again. We have argued with this person for so long and has turned and turned us off and turned us out from even wanting to try to help them. When I pray for the impossible people, I bind the spirit of bondage that is keeping them bound in their sin and loose the spirit of adoption as Romans chapter 8 verse 15 says to begin working in them because we have been adopted into beloved. It is the spirit of the Lord that brings them to the point of decision. They will have their own free will in the matter, but the Holy Spirit draws them. He heals, he heals them to bring them to the mark. And he called them to be stopped in their tracks. And at the moment of decision, the more quickly when the Holy Spirit comes into their life, the spirit of bondage, the shackles is broken off their lives in the name of Jesus. Instantly, those shackles are broken. Because the Holy Spirit begins to work the moment we acknowledge and make the decision, God, I give my life to you. And the Holy Spirit comes inside of you and says, I'm breaking the chains and shackles right now. Just like Paul and Silas, when they were bound in prison in the Sanhedrin jail in Roman, Roman, in Roman, in, in the Book of Rome, I mean in Rome, when they was in Rome in prison, the Holy Spirit came in at midnight and shook the jailhouse, and all the shackles and the chains fell off every person, and they were set free. Jesus instructed us in Luke chapter ten, verse two. Luke chapter ten, verse two. Pray ye therefore that the Lord will harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Luke chapter 10, verse 2. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, which is Jesus Christ himself, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. It may be impossible for us to be physically present to lead the person to the Lord. Talk about the impossible person, the person who keeps rejecting Christ, who keeps rejecting you from bringing the truth to them. In fact, we may have to have to walk away from them, but the Holy Spirit, because of love from God, will confront that person over and over again with truth in their hearts. And when the day of salvation arrives, the Lord will be faithful to give the person the right to be his child and to come into right standing, right relationship, and fellowship with himself. Then you will be able to rejoice with the angels in heaven because you were faithful in your intercession for their salvation. Some come quickly and others it may take a little more time because of stubbornness. Be assured that all of heaven is honoring your prayers and binding and loosing. Bind the enemy in this person's life each time the Holy Spirit nudges you to pray for them until you see results. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman and is waiting for you to come into agreement with God's word and God's will in the individual's life before he starts his work. Out of ignorance, he is continually throwing the door open. Each time you bind the strong man in his life, in that person's life, each time you bind the enemy in that person's life, they will be bound for a season and hindered in their influences. So what God does, the more you keep interceding and praying for that person who's impossible to reach with the gospel of truth, God says you keep on praying for them, the Holy Spirit will hinder the influences of the enemy from using them and controlling their life. But you got to loose the spirit of adoption and loose the power of the Holy Spirit to draw them to Christ. The impossible person may have other strongholds operating in their life that, that you may recognize, but the Holy Spirit does not have an error. The Holy Spirit will begin to reveal those things in that person's life. And as you begin to bind them, then you loose the power of God to work in their lives. And I guarantee the word of truth will begin to break those strongholds in their lives and set them free. So I want you to pray with me tonight this prayer. If you know someone or yourself who's been bound in any kind of way in the spirit of bondage, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Dear Father, I come to you realizing that only you can free me from the web of Satan. Thank you for your great love for me. I desire to call you Abba Father and feel your arms of love wrapped around me so I won't have to seek love from alcohol or any other false hopes. Satan has dangled before my eyes, promise me, promising me so much and delivering so little. 
Forgive me for all my sins. I promise to serve you for the rest of my life. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and I bind the spirit of bondage according to the Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, which states, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. I see you now as you really are, a spiritual spider trying to bind and paralyze me with the cord of habits and bondages. I command you, in the name of Jesus to leave me alone and never return. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your beautiful freedom. I lose the spirit of adoption in my life, according to Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, which promises me, whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Help me to continue forever in your freedom and through the power of the Holy Spirit. I promise to read your word and walk by faith and not by sight or by feelings so that I can obey your will for my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a hand praise for that prayer. That's a powerful prayer that's written in our book tonight. The strong man, what's his name? What's his game? The strong man, his name, what's his game? And I don't know about you, but this is a really powerful lessons God has given me to teach. Now, I'm learning something myself, you know, different areas in my life that, that I dealt with that were bound. Even some areas are still bound and God is still breaking and setting free. As I continue to keep studying his word and keep yielding to him, I guarantee that those things the enemy think he, that has control over your life really don't have the power that he thought he had. Because Jesus paid the price for you. He set you free. And I guarantee as you walk in this freedom, you got to continue to keep binding him on a daily basis because he is bound. Just, just to remind us, that we got to keep on coming back and knocking down the door again that the enemy tries to build up in our life. Because if you stumble and fall for deceptions again, immediately confront the situation with another prayer that binds the power from the beginning again and again in your life. And allow the Holy Spirit, through the power of faith in God's word, to quickly operate in your life to break down those doors, those strongholds, those imprisoned walls that have held you in captivity, that you will continue to walk in your freedom. And I guarantee as you do this, God will continue to open the door to his promises and his will and his plan for your life. And you will continue to be blessed and highly favored all the days of your life. That is great news to know that I'm blessed and highly favored all the days of my life. So I guarantee tonight, my brother, my sister, it doesn't matter what it is that the enemy had you bound with. Tonight, if you receive it by faith, you have been set free. You have been set free. You're not going to be set free. You have been set free. Now walk in the freedom where Christ has set you free. And as you walk in it, amen, hallelujah. As you walk in that freedom, I tell you what you do. <laughs> you open up the portals of heaven. When you open the portals of heaven, God says, now I can rain down the showers of blessings over your life. God will rain down showers. And what I mean, an abundance, an overflow of blessings in your life to meet you right where you are. Not just for you, but for your children and the children's children and the children's children. That's what God says, because he will continue because of your faithfulness and your accountability and your stewardship to love him with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. That is excellent news. So again, I thank you for tuning in tonight. Do anyone have any questions or comments they would like to address at this time? You can write it in right now if you got any questions or anything I need to go over again for you before we dismiss tonight. I don't, I don't mind answering questions. If you feel the Spirit of God, I put a link also on, on my notification about the class tonight to sow a donation through Cash App or PayPal. If you feel the compulsion of the Holy Spirit to sow a seed, feel free to sow a seed into this ministry that God has given me to do. Because I guarantee it's not going to fall on, 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 on feudal ground. It's going to fall on a ground that's, that's being productive. A ground that's being productive. And I guarantee your seed 
will also cause God to release more promises in your life just by sowing a seed. He said, when you give, it'll come back to you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. I'm a living witness. Every time I sow a seed in faith, in obedience to God's word, God always calls somebody else to come along and either send me a check in the mail or somebody just give me some money in my hand because they said the Lord told them to do it. It is so awesome when you see God to that degree to where it goes beyond your comprehension that he will begin to bless you tremendously because of your obedience and so on seeds. So think about it, pray about it, and allow the God, God to move upon your heart to sow a seed into this ministry. And I guarantee you will continue to receive blessings upon blessings and promises that God has for you in your life. Even in your ministry. Somebody on here has a ministry. And God says your ministry is about to go into an explosion. Because he's about to overflow in your ministry because of your obedience. That you have heard the word of God tonight. Even when you sow a seed, God says that seed is going to be the releasing for the promises of your ministry, even your business that you're trusting and believing God for. God says this seed is going to open up the avenues of expectancy for God to open the windows of heaven and begin to pour into your life greater revelation, greater insight, greater understanding of the word of God. And I guarantee that what you're expecting, God, you might be praying and interceding for somebody to be healed. God says your seed even going to produce healing in somebody else's life because of your obedience. I'm not one that beg people anything. I'm not one to say, hey, you got to do this, you got to do that. I, I, I put the word out there in obedience to the Holy Spirit. And I allow God to touch your heart, to bring conviction to your heart of what he wants you to do. And when you obey God's word, I guarantee God's, God will move in such a tremendous way in your life, in your finance. I even seen other people that God had touched them to sow a seed into my ministry. And then because of their obedience, God blessed them tremendously financially. I mean, God, he reigns in many different ways in our lives. Why? Because of the expectancy. That's why I always tell you, expect God to do something supernatural in your life. Expect God to open up the portals of heaven and release the promises in your life. His promises comes in many different ways, but you got to expect God. And I guarantee the Lord will perform his word to hear watch of his word to perform it in your life until it manifests in your life. So, Lord God, tonight, I thank you for the opportunity, oh God, to speak your word. I pray that your word, Father, have not fallen from deaf ears, but we who heard the word tonight, God, is being convicted by the Holy Spirit to change, being convicted, God, to turn our ears to hear your voice and our hearts to be obedient to your word. I thank you, Lord God, that the Holy Spirit is working in all of our lives right now, God, stripping up the armor of the enemy off of our lives and clothing us with the armor of Jesus Christ, our minds, our bodies, our soul, our will, our emotions, aligning with your word, oh God, and we're being healed, we're being delivered, we're being set free by the promises of your word because there's a covenant we have with you, God. And you're not a man that you should lie, nor a son of man you need repentance. But God, you said what you have spoken, you're able to make it good. In other words, you're able to perform it. And God, we want to thank you tonight that your word shall manifest. That you will meet every person's need, oh God, by faith in Jesus' name. And I thank you that testimony is going to come forth, oh God, of how you open up the doors of heaven, oh God, the portals of heaven. And you met them in a way, oh God, they were expecting, oh God, and you performed it. And I thank you, Lord God. And we bind every demonic force, every attack, every assault that will come against this word that has been spoken tonight, oh God. And your word will not be hindered or checked by any demonic force, but it shall manifest in the lives of the hearers. And we thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, again, I want to thank you for tuning in tonight. And if you got any questions, you can always inbox me at Charles Emery. You can always inbox me or even call me on Messenger. You know, if you got any questions or comments we'd like to discuss, you know, in person with me, you can call me on Messenger. And I guarantee we, uh, I'm going to continue 
to keep walking in what God has instructed me to do because it's so important. In these last days, we're living in perilous times. It is so important that we know the word of God and have a sureness about the word of God for our lives because the enemy is coming to a place to try to destroy you. And I guarantee when you surrender to God's word, God's word is going to bring such a change in your life. And I, I guarantee I can bank my life on it. God's word is going to produce something in your life that you expect God to do. Watch and see it. Watch and see it, it's going to happen. Um, you can go to, um, give me a second. I'm going to post it on here. Give me a second. I will post uh, where you can go. Because I, I guarantee that God is, is doing such an awesome work in our lives. He's, uh, he's doing an awesome work in our lives. And we just got to be faithful to it and keep trusting and expecting God. We got to keep expecting God. Give me a second. I'm going to post this on here in one second. I, I believe in the word of God. I believe in walking by faith and not by sight. And I, I, I tell this all the time. That the more you get the word inside of you, the more God's word will begin to manifest. It's going to be, if I can get this thing to post, it would be great. It's tripping. Okay, let's see this. Let me do this here. Control C. Hallelujah. I, I thank you, uh, uh, Minister Kinesa. Thank you for joining me tonight. God bless you, sis. Thank you to uh, Sister Carla. God bless you. God bless you. If you like the uh, so, I just posted on here. I think it went through. It should have went through. Um, yeah, it went through. Okay, I just posted on here. If you like the so into the the ministry. You know, like I said, just be moved by the Spirit of God. Allow the Spirit of God to guide you in what He wants you to do and, and allow Him to do that. You know, because I, I, I guarantee I had so many different miracles in my life that I can talk about. And if I got to talk about many things that happened to me, you were like, oh my God. Just even this weekend, I, I was invited to go to a funeral in Chicago. One of my friends, his wife, brother, daughter, had passed away. And just because of my obedience of going to sing at this funeral, I was blessed with $130 just because of the obedience. I mean, so it's like many, many blessings God have done in my life because of my obedience. And I, I just keep on asking God every day. I said, God, I want to thank you that you give me a heart of obedience to do what you tell me to do, unhindered and check by any demonic force. And I want to thank you, Lord God, that I'm blessed and highly favored, that as I sow, that you restore to me a hundredfold blessing, plus that I live in the overflow. And, you know, and I pray this all the time, even on Sunday mornings in my church, when I give my offering, I always pray over my offering. That's another thing I want to put in the nugget in your ear. When you give in church, pray over your offering. Pray a seed, pray over your seed. No matter what you're giving to the Lord, pray over that thing and begin to decree that I will live in the overflow. I will receive a harvest of blessings because you promised it if I faint not. And when you begin to decree God's word over your finances, God will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings you don't have enough room to receive. I'm just being, I just keep hearing God talk about that tonight because it's so important that we get a revelation about even our seed giving because the more you obey God in obedience, God will begin to rain down upon you in a way that you didn't even see coming, but you expected it. We got to always have an expectancy when it comes to God. And God says we're blessed. He said, we're blessed because he said, let everything have at birth, praise the Lord, right? But then he also says, uh, David said, I will bless the Lord all the time. His praise shall continue, continue to be in my mouth. So I keep praising God. His blessing is going to continue to keep raining on me. Why? It's like he's giving God what he wants. The more I give God what he wants, the more God begins to shower down on me what I want. And that's something, it's an exchange factor. I give God what he wants. God gives me what I want. And that happens all the time in my life. I can put my hand on the Bible and swear to that. Because it happens all the time. The more I give to God, the Bible says, you know, uh, that God gives seed to the soil and bread to the eater. So God, he says, the rain goes into, to, comes down from heaven in the snow or the earth. He says, so shall my word be, because it will not, he said, when I return thither, he said, but so shall my word be. He said, I, I, he said, I, my word that goes out of my mouth, it will not return to me void. He said, but my word would prosper in the place I sit and do what I wanted to do perform. So God knows 
it's a guarantee in exchange factor that when I trust God, God will do what he promised to do in your life. So you stay encouraged tonight, my brothers and sisters, and know that I love you. I appreciate you all tuning in each week. Share this video with somebody else and allow this word to continue to minister to you. I hope you go back and listen to it again. I will have it posted on YouTube as soon as we're off the class tonight. I always put it on YouTube because sometimes I play music and, and Facebook will mute the video So I don't, uh, because they cause the copyright issues. But when I go to YouTube, I can post the same video on YouTube and I always post it on there. So if you can't catch it on Facebook, you can always find it on YouTube. So you stay encouraged. And on YouTube, it's the same thing, Charles Emery. You know, so God bless you all tonight. Until next week, we're going to talk about next week. Uh, let me go back to my book here for a second. Next week, we're going to talk about the spirit of fear. We're going to start a new subject dealing with the spirit of fear. And I know we all know somebody or even were victimized by it ourselves, the spirit of fear. And I guarantee from the revelation knowledge and the word of God, God is going to give you insight beyond the natural realm into the mysteries of the gospel to set you free. Y'all be blessed and have a good night.